You start out playing rock and roll so you can have sex and do drugs. But you end up doing drugs so you can still play rock and roll and have sex. Yeah. To celebrate the band's longevity and insatiable desire to bring live music to the masses, let's rank theirs, top 10 best songs of all time. But before we jump right in, let's take a moment to appreciate the Stones' new single Angry and new album Hackney Diamonds. The Rolling Stones, icons of rock and roll. Angry is the first single from our new album called Hackney Diamonds, which is out on October 20th. The album is also the first since the death of drummer Charlie Watts, and the first containing original material since 2005's A Bigger Bang. Hackney Diamonds is English slang for the shards of glass left scattered on the ground after smash-and-grab robberies and refers to the historically working-class East London neighborhood. It's like when you get your windscreen broken on a Saturday night in Hackney, Jagger joked. It's like when you get your windscreen broken uh, on Saturday night in Hackney. Ran. <laughs> called Hackney Diamonds because we, I think we were between, we were flinging ideas around for titles and we went from hit and run, smash and grab, and somehow between that, I like those. we came up with Hackney Diamonds, which is like a variation of the both. And also, it's a London band, you know, and yeah. we thought that was... <laughs> Now. Number 10. Angie stands as one of the most heartfelt and emotionally resonant ballads in the Rolling Stones repertoire. Released in 1973 on their Goat's Head Soup album, the track became an instant classic. Angie by the Rolling Stones is a masterclass in storytelling, composition, and emotional depth. It remains a testament to the Rolling Stones' unparalleled ability to capture moments of raw human emotion, package them in hauntingly beautiful melodies, and release them into the world to resonate with generations. Angie is a timeless testament to the prowess and emotion of the Rolling Stones. Beast of Burden meshed the sound of Richards and Ronnie Wood in a way that was distinguishingly evolved from the Stones of the late 60s. I don't need no beast of Off the 1978 record Some Girls, the band was barreling toward the 1980s when popular music took a dramatic turn in songwriting, both technically and philosophically. Predating the hard turn of disco-era dance tracks like Emotional Rescue and She's So Cold, the chops of Beast of Burden featured the core of what made the Rolling Stones great, but boasted a modern energy, as if to say, we aren't being left behind. <laughs> Despite Richard's ongoing battle with drugs, the band still had a fire in them. Tumbling Dice, hailing from their 1972 album, Exile on Main Street. Keith Richards, the mastermind behind many of the Rolling Stones' memorable riffs, was instrumental in shaping the song. The track has a rollicking, loose feel, emblematic of the entire Exile on Main Street album. Tumbling Dice was chosen as the lead single from Exile on Main Street. 
the song became a massive hit, solidifying its place in rock history. Today, it's not just celebrated for its catchy riff and lyrical depth, but also as a representation of the Rolling Stones at a particularly tumultuous and creatively fruitful period in their career. Can't You Hear Me Knocking is one of the Rolling Stones' iconic tracks, hailing from their 1971 album, Sticky Fingers. The song is recognized for its legendary riff and extended jam, which takes up more than half of the track's seven-minute runtime. Keith Richards, the Rolling Stones' lead guitarist and the song's primary composer, is known for his distinctive and infectious riffs. Richards had a knack for finding unique guitar hooks that would act as a foundation for their songs. The story Can't You Hear Me Knocking, a legendary track created in a moment of unplanned musical brilliance. It's a testament to the Rolling Stones' unique and improvisational approach to music. Set list. Okay. Jumpin' Jack Flash is one of the Rolling Stones' most iconic songs, released in 1968. Watch it! The song's title and inspiration came from a real-life event involving Keith Richards, the band's lead guitarist. Keith was in his country house in Sussex, England, together with Mick Jagger, when they were woken up early one morning by a noise. It was the sound of Keith's gardener, named Jack, walking past the window in heavy boots. When Jagger asked what the noise was, Richards replied, Oh, that's Jack. That's Jumpin' Jack. This comment sparked something in the two of them. They were inspired to write a song around that theme and imagery. Jumpin' Jack Flash became a quintessential Stones track, symbolizing their return to their rock and roll roots after their brief foray into psychedelia. Many consider Jumpin' Jack Flash to be one of the greatest rock and roll songs ever recorded. Did you know? The Stones rearranged the song for live performance, and Richards now plays it in open G with a capo on the fourth fret. Richards said if he was told he could only play one of his riffs for the rest of his life, this is the one he'd choose. Wild Horses, as well as Jim Dickinson's Bedrock Piano, The Stones' timeless country-tinged ballad is a story of three masterfully interwoven guitar parts. There's Richards's 12-string tuned to open G, not something you could do on stage in a hurry, picking out minor chords and harmonic embellishments. Mick Taylor's second acoustic, in Nashville tuning, with the lower gauge E, A, D, and G strings tuned an octave higher, holding the song structure down. But I don't have much time. And Richards's mournful electric guitar licks, incorporating blues, rock and roll, and country styles, into one majestic, perfectly phrased performance. Did you know? During a transfer at Olympic Studios, a bent spool caused the master tape of Wild Horses to become wrapped around a capstan motor. The creases were pressed out with a cold iron. Ironically, the real zipper found on the packaging of Sticky Fingers would often dent that specific track on the vinyl anyway. There's a reason why certain riffs in rock history transcend generations 
and remain iconic years after they first graced our ears. How do you make that sound out of that? That guitar is not even an electric guitar. Well, I've, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you do it, oh, and you oh. did it, and... I know I can do it, but I don't know how I do it. <laughs> uh. One of the hallmarks of a great riff is that from the moment you hear it, you immediately recognize the song. Greatness often lies in simplicity, and the Honky Tonk Woman riff is a testament to this. Using an open G tuning, Richards crafted a riff that's both easy to play and incredibly catchy. Is it sure? To an open G, right? And if you're gonna do Honky Tonk Women or something, you It's this simplicity that allows guitarists of all levels to engage with it, making the song's legacy even more powerful. There's an infectious, raw energy in the riff. It's gritty, it's dirty, and it encapsulates the essence of rock and roll. And this song, in particular, has inspired a multitude of guitarists to pick up the instrument for the first time. To this day, the cowbell clanging, guitar-heavy introduction to Honky Tonk Women remains one of the most instantly recognizable riffs in rock music. A true testament to the Rolling Stones' musical genius and lasting impact on popular music. Paint It Black The Stones were beaten to the sitar and guitar combination by the Beatles on Norwegian Wood the year before. But the dark psychedelic flavor conjured up by Brian Jones's ominous noodling on this 1966 counterculture anthem has arguably proved just as influential. The song owes a lot of its power to Charlie Watts's kinetic drums, combined with the bolero rhythms strummed on acoustic guitars. Though apparently, Keith was less enamored with his electric on the record. The electric guitar doesn't sound quite right to me, the one I play, he said in 1966. I should have used a different guitar, at least a different sound. Did you know? Bill Wyman played the B3 organ pedals on the track by laying on the ground and punching them with his fists. Released in 1968 as part of their iconic album Beggar's Banquet, Sympathy for the Devil stands out as one of the Rolling Stones' greatest achievements. This groundbreaking song captivated audiences with its unique blend of rock, blues, and Latin influences. However, it also courted controversy due to its provocative lyrical content, leading to debates about its true message and intentions. I was around when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain. The making of Sympathy for the Devil, written by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Sympathy for the Devil began as a jam session during the band's rehearsals 
inspired by a book by Russian author Mikhail Bulgakov called The Master and Margarita. Jagger developed the idea of presenting the devil as a multifaceted character, exploring themes of power, seduction, and human nature. The song's distinctive rhythm, dominated by congas and maracas, was heavily influenced by the burgeoning fascination with Afro-Cuban music that was prevalent during the late 1960s. The Stones, known for their willingness to experiment, incorporated this rhythmic style to create an infectious and dynamic backdrop for Jagger's haunting vocals. Please let me introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for many a long, long year. Stole many a man's soul and faith. Yes, I was round when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain. Sympathy for the Devil is revered as a masterpiece for several reasons. Firstly, the song's arrangement is a testament to the Rolling Stones' musical prowess. The rhythm section, comprising Charlie Watts on drums, establishes a driving groove that relentlessly propels the song forward. Jagger's vocal performance is both commanding and hypnotic. He seamlessly shifts between different perspectives, embodying various historical and literary figures associated with evil throughout the ages. The lyrics paint vivid images of dark historical events, such as the crucifixion of Jesus, the Russian Revolution, and the assassination of the Kennedy brothers. Jagger's portrayal of the devil as a charismatic and charming figure raises thought-provoking questions about humanity's complicity in evil acts. Some critics argued that the song promoted devil worship or sympathized with evil. Its lyrics, particularly lines like, I shouted out, who killed the Kennedys? I shouted out, who killed the Kennedys? And I watched with glee while your kings and queens fought for ten decades were perceived as provocative and politically charged. Watch the glee while you keep their queens for ten decades. Moreover, the song arrived at a tumultuous time in history, marked by political assassinations, civil rights movements, and the Vietnam War. In this context, sympathy for the devil unintentionally became a lightning rod for societal tensions, and its reception varied greatly. Some listeners embraced its provocative nature as a reflection of the era while others condemned it as morally objectionable. Beyond its musical significance, the song represents a bold exploration of complex themes and societal taboos. It challenges listeners to confront the darker aspects of human history and raises questions about morality, power dynamics, and the responsibility of individuals in shaping the world. When it comes to defining the greatest song of all time, one track that consistently emerges as a top contender is the Rolling Stones' Gimme Shelter. Ah! 
Released in 1969, this timeless classic not only embodies the essence of rock and roll, but also encapsulates the turbulent spirit of an era, making it a strong contender for the title of the greatest song ever recorded. Iconic opening guitar riff, Gimme Shelter, is instantly recognizable thanks to its opening guitar riff. Its raw and menacing quality immediately draws the listener in, creating an atmosphere that is both exhilarating and foreboding. Haunting vocals. The song's vocal performances are nothing short of extraordinary. Mick Jagger and Mary Clayton's duet creates a haunting and powerful narrative that reflects the turmoil of the late 1960s. Clayton's spine-tingling impassioned vocals in particular are a testament to the emotional intensity that this song conveys. Her chilling vocals, particularly her raw emotional cries of rape murder, gave the song an added layer of intensity. Timeless Lyrics, Gimme Shelter, addresses themes of violence, chaos, and the desperate need for sanctuary, which were incredibly relevant in 1969, with the Vietnam War raging and the counterculture movement in full swing. These themes continue to resonate with listeners today as the world grapples with its own set of challenges. The lyrics' universality adds to the song's enduring appeal. Social and historical relevance. The song's release in 1969 was no accident. The tumultuous backdrop of the late 1960s, characterized by the anti-war movement and civil rights struggles, gave Gimme Shelter a profound social and historical context. It became an anthem for a generation demanding change and served as a reflection of the era's collective consciousness. Musical brilliance. Gimme Shelter is a masterclass in musical composition. Its blending of rock, blues, and gospel influences creates a dynamic and rich sound that is both energizing and emotionally resonant. The song's arrangement, from the rolling drum fills to the soaring vocals, demonstrates the Rolling Stones' unparalleled musicianship. Live performances, the Rolling Stones have performed Gimme Shelter live countless times throughout their career, and each rendition is a testament to their energy and charisma on stage. It is a song that comes alive in a concert setting, further solidifying its status as a legendary track. Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones is the greatest song of all time because it is more than just a piece of music. It's a cultural touchstone. Its iconic opening riff, haunting vocals, timeless lyrics, and historical relevance make it a standout track that continues to resonate with audiences across the world. It has not only stood the test of time, but also left an indelible mark on the history of music. Gimme Shelter is a masterpiece that encapsulates the spirit of rock and roll and the essence of a generation, securing its place as the greatest song of all time. Do you agree with our list? Let us know in the comments below. Don't get angry with me. Until next time, and keep on rolling.
He don't know if it's right or wrong Maybe he should tell someone He's not sure just what it was Or if it's against the law Something